I'm going to be going over how to get the Robstride 04 actuator working with Python using the Python package developed by Kscale Labs. Now their Python package uses 3.11, so you're going to want some instance of 3.11 installed in your machine. In this case, I'm going to be using WSL, which is Linux running on Windows in a virtual machine-like instance. That's what I have here pulled up in VS Code in the terminal. And for my installation of Python, I'm going to be using Conda, just because that's my preference for virtual environment for Python. We'll activate it here. Conda activates actuator. Now we're going to follow the documents here from Kscale Labs and install some packages that are necessary for it. So you'll want to run this first command here. You just paste that. Now I already have these packages installed in this instance. And the next step we're going to want to do is install with the pip package. Now we can install with the normal pip package or get it directly from the GitHub. I'm going to be running the normal installation. But before you do so, you're going to want to install the Rust compiler for the system since the back end for this package is Rust. For WSL, we're going to use RustUp, which can be installed from the link on this website here. We'll just copy paste that into our WSL terminal and that'll download and run the installer. It's going to ask which kind of installation we're going to want. We'll just go with the first option. This should take a minute, but since I already had it installed in the system, it went pretty quickly. So now we can go back to the pip command. pip install actuator. And now it should successfully build the package. So with that successfully built, we're going to want to get our Robstride CAN bus adapter, which is this USB dongle here, connected with USB to our Windows machine. Now we're going to want to pass this USB connection over to our WSL instance, so we're going to need to install another program called USB IPD-Win. Now this will pass through our USB connection over to the WSL instance. So we'll go to this link here, and on this page you'll go to the release pages, which will have an up-to-date version download for the program. You'll want to download this MSI download and run through the quick installation. So with that installed, we can use some of the commands that are on the page here and check if the USB device is currently being passed through to WSL. So I'm going to take the CAN bus installed, the CAN bus adapter here. I'm going to plug it into my Windows machine. After you've plugged in the USB CAN adapter, you're going to want to open PowerShell in administrative mode. So with PowerShell in administrative mode, I'm going to be taking these commands from the page here. You got USB IPD lists. And under this list, you should see a connected device called USB serial CH340. It should be connected with a comm device. Now we're going to want to take note of the bus ID here. Using this bus ID, we're going to bind it to our WSL system, then attach it. So using the commands that are listed on the page, USB IPD bind dash dash bus ID, and then the ID that you found for the adapter. Now, if you don't see this adapter, you may have to install the drivers, which there is a tutorial for installing on this page of the docs. So go to this link here, and you will install the USB controller driver for this. For my instance, I didn't have to. I believe Windows installed it automatically somehow. So now we're going to bind the device. In this case, I already had it bound and then we're going to want to attach it. So attach WSL bus ID and then our bus ID. And you should be able to hear it disconnect from the Windows system and to check that it is attached to our Linux system. We can come over to our terminal here, ls slash dev slash tty and then hit tab. It should autocomplete and we should be able to see something called USB 
zero. So that should mean it connected successfully. And if you are not sure, you can unplug the device. I'm going to unplug it and hit tab again and it's not visible. Now I'm going to reconnect it. And every time you reconnect it, you will have to run the attach commands to reconnect it to the WSL system. So we'll run the attach command again. And it's connected again. So now that we have the CAN adapter connected to the WSL system, we're going to want to run our Python program. So what I'm going to be running here is a example program from the Python package from Kscale Labs. And in this case, they have a program to run two instances of the actuator, but I've modified it here to just run one. Now, the important notes from the script are the port name, the port ID, and the port type. So the port name is going to be that USB directory that we just hit tab to find. So you're going to want to type slash dev slash TTY USB zero, unless it's a different USB number, it might be one or two. And you're going to want to type in the correct motor ID. Now you're going to get this motor ID from the debugging software that comes from the Rob Stride actuator. Um, the software download is on their site. You can set the ID too and change it. And we're going to want to set the correct motor type. In this case, I'm using the 04. With those parameters set correctly, now we should be able to run our scripts and with keyboard input, the position should change. So we'll run our script. I forgot to turn it on. So this is what happens when it's not turned on. We'll turn it on and restart our script. And it's successfully connected. That's me hitting A and D. We've got some movement. Now, this package is being updated every single day. Some of the code that I was using before has already not worked. It is a very much so a live project. So if you have any questions about this actuator or any suggestions, please leave a comment.